FreeNAS Mini and Mini XL Network Upgrade. The FreeNAS Mini Network Upgrade Kit includes one Chelsea 10 gigabit network interface card with dual SFP Plus ports, or one Intel 10 gigabit dual port network card with RJ45 connectors. SFP Plus modules can be ordered separately or may be included with the kit. Note that the Intel network card does not support SFP Plus modules. FreeNAS Mini NIC install. In the first part of the video, we'll be installing it for the FreeNAS Mini. Skip to the second half if you want to see it on the FreeNAS Mini XL. You will need a Phillips screwdriver. Shut down your FreeNAS system and unplug the power cables and any other cables. Mark the cables and mark them to ensure they will be plugged back into the right spot. If a tamper resistant sticker is present on the back of the case, it can be removed or cut without affecting the warranty. The FreeNAS Mini uses a short half height bracket. The FreeNAS Mini XL uses a tall full height bracket. Let's look at the SFP Plus module on the Chelsea card. Align the SFP Plus module with the SFP Plus cage and gently push it until it slides into place. Different types of SFP Plus modules are available. Connecting them to the network depends on the type. Keep the dust cover on the SFP Plus module until you are ready to connect the fiber optic cable. The Intel card does not support SFP Plus modules. Let's open the FreeNAS Mini case. Unscrew the four thumb screws on the back. Slide the black metal cover off. The power supply is connected to the motherboard with a 24 pin connector. Press on the upper part of the latch and pull the connector upward to disconnect the power supply. Note that this connection is tight. Hold the motherboard tray in place if needed. Unplug the four SATA cables connected to the blue SATA connectors and any optional SATA cables connected to the white slots. Unplug each connector individually by pulling upwards on the black part of the connector. Now, remove the three motherboard tray back panel screws and remove the two inside edge screws. Gently lift and slide the motherboard tray outside of the chassis. Remove the slot cover screw and slot cover from the back panel. Slide the motherboard tray out of the chassis until there is enough room for the network card to fit into the PCIe slot. Align the network card with the PCIe slot and press down on the center of the card firmly until it is fully seated. Use the slot cover screw removed earlier to attach the new network card to the back panel. Slide the motherboard tray gently back into place. Replace the three motherboard tray back panel screws and the two inside edge screws. Reconnect the motherboard power supply connector. Press down firmly until fully seated and the latch is closed. Reconnect the SATA cables. There is an L-shaped key in the SATA connector, so these only fit into the connector one way. Closing the FreeNAS Mini case. Check for any loose wires and make sure you are not catching or crimping any wires while replacing the case. Replace the four thumb screws on the back. FreeNAS Mini XL NIC installation. The FreeNAS Mini XL uses a tall full height bracket. Remove the two bracket screws from the card to replace the bracket and then replace the screws. Remove the four thumb screws on the back and remove both of the side panels off the chassis. Unplug the six SATA cables connected to the blue SATA connectors and any optional SATA cables connected to the white slots. Remove each connector individually by gently pulling upwards on the black part of the connector. The power supply is connected to the motherboard with a 24 pin connector. Press on the upper part of the latch and pull the connector upward to disconnect the power supply. Note that this connection is tight. Hold the motherboard tray in place if needed. Now, remove the three motherboard tray back panel screws and remove the two inside edge screws. Gently lift and slide the motherboard tray outside of the chassis. Remove the slot cover screw and slot cover from the back panel. Slide the motherboard tray out of the chassis until there is enough room for the network card to fit into the PCIe slot. Align the network card with the PCIe slot and press down on the center of the card firmly until it is fully seated. Use the slot cover screw removed earlier to attach the new network card to the back panel. Slide the motherboard tray gently back into place. 
Replace the three motherboard tray back panel screws and the two inside edge screws. Reconnect the motherboard power supply connector. Press down firmly until fully seated and the latch is closed. Reconnect the SATA cables. There is an L-shaped key in the SATA connector, so these only fit into the connector one way. Now slide both the panels back on and replace the thumb screws. Congratulations, you have successfully upgraded the network interface card.